man. Let's go over here to the streets of Utah, guys. We we're heading over here to the mountains, man. It's a whole snow. It's a whole uh, blizzard over here right now, my guys. But let's head over here to the streets of Utah. We have the Jazz here, land six points at the house versus the Washington Wizards. Over and under, sitting at two thirty in this one, Josh. We will go to you first on this one, my brother. Um, you liking the Wizards in this? One? You think they can keep it close and cover three straight? Uh, I definitely think they can, man. I think that we haven't quite got that right adjustment for Washington in the market now that they have Bradley Beal back, now that they have Bonte Morris back. Uh, Pozinga's questionable. I don't know if he goes tonight. Um, you know, Obviously, it would be a big plus for them if he does. But even without him, I, I think that there's still a, a much steadier foundation to this team now with that starting backcourt there. We've seen how bad the Wizards have been over the past sort of three weeks. But if you look specifically when Monte Morris and Bradley Beal both start for Washington, their offensive numbers are absolutely incredible, ridiculous. In fact, they're, uh, you know, one of the top offenses in the league when those two take the floor, uh, which shows just how bad they've been without them. And I think that's more the case that, you know, you then don't have to rely on guys like Goodwin and Kispert to be playing 35, 36 minutes a night. Um, you know, which is always going to be a net negative for any team in the NBA, especially one like Washington that doesn't have the other pieces around them. So, yeah, I just think that we're, we're still not pricing Washington correctly now that they are getting a little bit healthy. I mean, you look, it was only a couple of weeks ago that Portland went to Utah and they were only catching four and a half, five points. And that was with no Damian Lillard and no Josh Hart. And uh, I think that this Washington team with uh, their starting backcourt back with Kuzma playing the way he is at the moment as well, um, they're probably just as good, if not better than that Portland team. So I managed to grab a six and a half. A uh, six is still for me playable for Washington in this spot here. Also taking their team total over, just because like I said, their offensive numbers when they have both Beal and Morris uh, available to sort of execute and to initiate the offense is just uh, night and day difference. So Utah's defense does have its vulnerabilities. Uh, I think that the spot is probably better for Washington than what it is for Utah, even though they're sort of in the midst of this uh, West Coast road trip, front end of a back-to-back, um, almost, you know, almost heading back home, you know, one more uh, game left on this trip. But Utah returning home after three games on the East Coast, I think this is probably more of a flat spot for them than what it is for Washington. So I expect Washington to be able to score well and efficiently, and they should be able to hang inside that number. I think they're going to be live to win outright tonight. Yeah, and I can tell you this, Josh, if Porzingis comes back, I think you catch both of those easily, in my opinion. What I'm going with another t- another player that's been hot for the Wizards over there is Kyle Kuzma. We know that he's auditioning mm. for new teams as well. He's hoisting up a ton of threes. Now, obviously, those cool couple games without Porzingis, um, he had a lot more touches, but we know that he's going to shoot threes. He went to college in Utah as well, so maybe have a few of, the, few of his old pals watching his game. Give me Kuzma uh, over two, two and a half threes made in this one, Ski. Um, I think the Attempts will be there, and as long as the volume is, will be there, um, I'll live and die with this play here. Give me the Kuz- Kyle Kuzma over two and a half threes. Let him fly, Kuz. Uh, but Ski, how are you looking at this game, my brother? You think Wizards is – they are on a sixth game. This is the sixth game of their road trip, but you got the Jazz coming home off three straight games on the east, come home for one game, then they go back out on the road as well for uh, or again for three more road games. Um, do you like the spot for, for Utah here, or are you you liking a total in this one, my guy? Ski, I already know. Yeah, I, I, I don't really want to look at the side just because, I mean, I, I, I don't want the Wizards um, because they haven't been winning, and I don't want the Jazz because they have not been good this year laying points. So it's just I have to look towards the total. It's the only way I can think of for myself to try and make some money. And I look towards the under. Um, I know Washington has went under five of their last seven games. Utah, if the you know total was 230, they've also stayed under five of their last seven and it's another one in that same situation. You guys have mentioned it. Washington has a game on deck. Road teams, um, a friend and other back-to-back are 67.7% uh, to the under this season. So I played them both. And if I was going to play one side today, it's not going to be in this game. So sorry on that one, guys. Yeah, now I like Josh's play there. I like where he's going. Bill has really shown some since he's came back as well. They've covered two straight since he's been back. Um, like I said, if they get Porzingis back here, I'm definitely riding with my guy Josh with the Wizards here, and I definitely think that team total can get there as well. Um, you just went up against the Suns team uh, and put up 113 on them. They're a lot better defensive team than the Jazz are. So uh, my guy Josh rocking with Wizards plus the six and Wizards team total over 112. I'm going with Kyle Kuzma over two and a half threes. My guy Ski is rocking with the under 230 in this one, uh, my guys. We- 